Good morning and welcome to worship on this 20th Sunday after Pentecost. Once again, it is a privilege uh, to come to you via uh, YouTube. And uh, I want to welcome our Spirit of Joy partners, but also this morning I want to welcome worshipers who are, who are living around the country. We've heard in these past weeks from people who are worshiping in uh, Ohio and in Wyoming, in Washington State, in Arizona, and in other places, we are so grateful that you are joining our congregation, uh, now spread far and wide in this way. Uh, we continue and will continue to offer a worship experience this way, and, and pray that wherever you are and uh, however you're coming to us at this time of worship will be a turning and returning to the Lord our God, though we are not together under one. Also, later in our service, we once again will invite you to receive uh, the Lord's Supper uh, for you to serve that in your place of worship. And uh, either now or later, we'll invite you to stop the recording and uh, gather some wine or grape juice and crackers or bread for you to eat and drink yourself and or with others who are worshiping with you this morning. God bless you guys who worship today. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates, redeems, and sustains us in all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin now in the presence of God and of one another. Let us pray. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and we go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, Lord. Cast away our transgressions and turn us again to life in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Dearly beloved, hear this truth. God hears the cries of all who call out in need. And through his death and resurrection, Jesus has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, now live in freedom and newness to, go, to do God's work in the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together. 
Sovereign God, raise your throne in our hearts. Created by you, let us live in your image. Created for you, let us act for your glory. Redeemed by you, let us give you what is yours. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now the peace of the Lord be with you always. Please take a moment to share God's peace with any that you are worshiping with in the same room this morning, or pull out your Good morning, boys and girls of Spirit of Joy and friends and partners of Spirit of Joy. I am so glad that you are with me this morning here in our sanctuary, wherever you are or whenever you are listening to this. I hope that you are having a good day. The story I have to tell you today is another story about Jesus. But before I do that, um, do you remember the last two weeks we've been talking about ways that God loves us and helps us remember how to love each other. We talked about the Ten Commandments, Ten Rules about how to love God and to love one another. And last week we talked about two special ways that God loves and takes care of us. In our baptism, in holy baptism, when God welcome, welcomes us into God's family, and in holy communion, the, the gifts of bread and wine or grape juice, where God forgives us and says, I will never let you go, you will be mine forever. Listen to this story today. Um, some people were trying to trick Jesus, and I want you to hear what Jesus says and does. The Pharisees loved the religious rules. They studied Jewish law and wanted to be important leaders. They were always looking for people who broke the rules, but the crowd wasn't paying attention to them. Everyone is listening to Jesus instead of us, they grumbled. How can we show the crowd they shouldn't listen to Jesus? So they decided to create a trap. Asking Jesus a tricky riddle would get him in trouble, they thought. Say, Jesus, the Pharisees started. The emperor says we should give our money to him. Other people say that's not what God wants. Who is right, the emperor or God? Well, if Jesus said the emperor, then people would think he wasn't following God, right? But if Jesus said God, he would go to jail for disobeying the emperor. So Jesus picked up a shiny coin and Jesus said, look, this has a picture on it. Who is it? And he held it up to them. The Pharisees said, it's a picture of the emperor. Well, that was an easy question. Well, Jesus says, then the emperor can have this coin. Trapped. Jesus loved the emperor more than God. But wait, Jesus added, this is more important. Whose image is on you? The Pharisees were stumped. If people are made in God's image, then everyone belongs to God. Well, there's so many ways that God takes care of us. And this story reminds me that even if people try to trick me or confuse me, that I know that God's image is on me and that I am loved by God. And you know how I'm loved by God? How do we know that we are loved by God? Well, here's how I know. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, and you? Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. That's one of the best ways that we know that Jesus loves us. I hope that you will remember that this week, that Jesus loves you. I bet you know that song and you can sing it too. Have a great week. Would you please pray with me? 
Gracious God, we thank you for the stories in the Bible, even this story about the way that the Pharisees tried to trick Jesus and the ways that Jesus answered them, telling them, you know what? God loves you. God's image is on you. Help us to remember Jesus loves us all week long. And all God's children said, amen. Have a good week. The lesson for today is Psalm 96. The singer of the psalm rejoices that the Lord is God over all the nations and all the earth, who intends to judge all people with all equity. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Pro proclaim God's salvation from day to day. Declare God's glory among the nations and God's wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, more to be feared than all gods. As for all gods of the nations, they are but idols, but you, O Lord, have made the heavens. Majesty and magnificent are in your presence. Power and splendor are in your sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples, ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due to the holy name. Bring offerings and enter the courts of the Lord. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before the Lord, all the earth. Tell it among the nations, the Lord is king. The one who made the world so firm that it cannot be moved will judge the peoples of, with equity. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all trees of the wood shout for the joy at your coming. O Lord, for you come to judge the earth. You will judge the world with righteousness and the people with your truth. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. gospel for today comes from the gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus and what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, 
And they left him and went away. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Dear siblings in Christ, grace and peace are yours this day from the God who creates, redeems, and sustains us in all of creation. Amen. Well, a few weeks ago, I read today's gospel passage for the first time to let it mull around in my head as I typically do at the first stage of sermon preparation. And I can say now that the sermon I would have written a couple weeks ago on this passage is not the, the same one that I'll give to you now. It's not the same one that was coming as I sat down to start writing yesterday. Such is sermon writing in 2020 when things seem to change by the minute. And such is the living word of God, which speaks to us in particular ways, in particular times. Well, the gospel reading we just heard uh, picks up in verse 15 of Matthew's 22nd chapter. The gospel writer says that some religious leaders have brewed up a plot to entrap Jesus. They ask him, as people of faith, should we pay taxes or not? And since the writer told us this is a trap, we know this question is a trick question. It's designed to make Jesus say something to get himself in trouble, Not exactly sure what, but something to get him in trouble with the powers that be, probably either of the temple or of the government. And Jesus, in response, asks to see a coin. And he gets, he asks whose head is on this coin and gets them to say that, um, of course, it's the emperor's head on the coin. And in conclusion, Jesus responds, The coin belongs to the emperor, so give what belongs to him to him, and give what belongs to God back to God. Which sort of answers the question about paying taxes. Seems like Jesus has responded to a trick question with a vague answer. And that sounds a little too familiar to me, perhaps to you too, during this election season. It almost feels like town hall with Jesus. A couple weeks ago, my sermon, I think, would have explored the trickery at play here, the trick question and vague answer. I would have explored what Jesus might be telling us here about where our allegiance should fall. Should our allegiance fall with the state or with God? Spoiler alert, I think Jesus here is saying that those two things are not separate, that it all belongs to God. Today in Matthew's Gospel, we get a political story, political meaning polis, having to do with the city polis. This political story may certainly call for a political sermon, maybe now more than ever. That might be true that this text demands a political sermon But when it came right down to it, call me a cop-out, but I just didn't have the energy to write a political sermon. And perhaps you wouldn't have had the energy to hear it. Over the past week in conversations with our partners, I've heard exhaustion and despair. I've heard loneliness and fear. I've heard lament and longing. On Thursday morning, we were shocked and saddened to learn of the sudden death of Tom Kelly, one of our beloved ministry partners and a beloved member of our Sioux Falls community. In my own family, we're still fresh in our mourning of my aunt's death from COVID. My sister and her family are just getting over their bout with the virus. Another beloved family member of mine For him, addiction has reared its ugly head again. I am tired. You are tired. Perhaps maybe you're also feeling sad or angry or hopeless or all of the above. I am certainly feeling all or some of those things too, depending on the moment. It's been a hard year and it doesn't seem to be getting any easier anytime soon. So on the one hand, reading this political passage out of Matthew's gospel today almost seems like a slap in the face. 
It almost adds insult to injury. Like the world is getting beaten down enough right now from every angle. Must we really get a political message from Jesus right now? How about a little Psalm 23, a nice happy shepherd image, a God who leads me beside still waters. How about some be still and know that I am God? How about some poetry from the Psalms or a powerful promise from the Apostle Paul? What about remember the lilies of the field from earlier in Matthew's gospel? Or something hearing about how our Heavenly Father cares even for the sparrows? How about some of that, Jesus? For goodness sake, anything but a trick political question and a vague answer. We have had quite enough political jargon these days. Thank you very much. How about some good news? How about some comfort, some words of love and protection, something personal? How about saying something we need to hear now, Jesus? in this moment, in this place, right here and right now, and not some sort of cryptic story about first century currency. Well, maybe it's because the powers that be of the lectionary, which is our scripture schedule, maybe it's because the lectionary forced me into this passage, maybe it's a cop-out, but I wonder if maybe this story is what we need to hear right now. Maybe a story about first century currency is good news for us right here and right now. Jesus said, give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's and to God the things that are God's. In other words, Jesus is saying everything belongs to God. And this certainly is good news. Over the past couple weeks, as I put my daughter to sleep, my prayers with her and for her have grown longer and longer. Maybe your prayers have too. Each day seems to beckon another prayer petition or two. Another friend feeling anxious in a pregnancy, wondering how to safely bring life into this uncertain world. Lord, in your mercy. Another family member facing addiction, Lord, in your mercy. Another assault on the earth, Lord, in your mercy. Another black indigenous person of color robbed of their humanity, Lord, in your mercy. Thousands more COVID diagnoses, dozens more COVID deaths in our state, Lord, in your mercy. With each petition at night, I cling more and more to my daughter and to the gratitude for the life and joy she has brought to us during all of this. And all I can say after all of these petitions is, God, I need you to take all of this. I need you to take these cares and these people and this earth, oh God, and hold them tight for they are yours. In other words, everything belongs to God which is good news. It's good news for me and for you, as perhaps we try to hold more than we think we can bear with the constant onslaught of political divisiveness and death and uncertainty of these days. Everything belongs to God. The world and its brokenness are in the hand of God, and not just any God, but our God, who made the heavens, as the psalmist writes in Psalm 96 that you just heard Peg read. The world is in the hand of the God who is worthy to be praised, to be revered above all other gods, to be revered and honored above the gods like emperors and governments and money and wealth and power. No, the world is in the hand of our God, our Lord, who is the only God worthy of holding the world. Everything belongs to God. This is good news for you and for me. And it's good news for the world. Because just imagine how we might live if we all truly believed that everything and everyone belongs to God, the world and all its people. How might we make decisions, big and small? How might we speak and plan and dream and vote if we believe that everyone and everything belong to God? And perhaps this is where the message becomes political after all. 
Again, political meaning pertaining to the city, the polis. Because everything in the city belongs to God. Every name on the ballot, every name impacted by what's on the ballot, every occupant of an ICU bed, every nurse and doctor and hospital custodian, every occupant of the White House and everyone seeking to get there, every student and teacher and postal worker, everyone and everything belongs to God. So give therefore to the emperor what is the emperor's and give to God what is God's. It is only God who is worthy of holding all of this. And it is this God who calls us to seek the well-being of all of humanity and all of creation, which after all, all belongs to God. Amen. has taught us sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us facing the rising sun of our new day begun let us march on till victory is won God of our God of our silent tears, Thou who hast brought us thus far on the way, Thou who hast by Thy might led us into the light, keep us forever in the path we pray. Lest our feet stray from the places, our God, where we met thee. Lest our hearts, drunk with the wine of the world, we forget thee. Glad owed by neath thy hand, may we forever stand. True to our God, true to our native land. Together we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again and ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. is stronger my love is stronger than your fear don't be afraid
afraid. My love is stronger, and I have promised, promised to be always near. Don't be afraid. My love is stronger. My love is stronger than your fear. Don't be afraid. My love is stronger, and I have promised, promised to be always near. This morning, as we move into a time of prayer together, I want to ask uh, your prayers, the prayers of our community, for uh, the family of Tom Kelly, who uh, suddenly died this past week. Please keep. Uh, Tom's wife Julie and their kids and grandkids and many, many friends in your prayers uh, today and in the coming days. Also ask that you continue to pray for our nation as we move uh, closer and closer to November election. Uh, we pray that we will remember um, how to be citizens together even as we are divided in, in other ways. And continue to pray for God's church as we meet in uh, different ways and continue as best as we can, led by the Holy Spirit, to do the mission and ministry that God has called us into. Thank you for your prayers. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Gracious God, you call us by name and invite us to share your good news. Send your Holy Spirit among preachers, missionaries, and evangelists to embolden them to declare the good news that your grace and mercy come to us in Jesus the Christ for all people. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. God of praise, the heavens and all creation declare your glory. From the rising of the sun to its setting, teach us to see your goodness in the heavens and in the earth. Raise up the devoted stewards of all that you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all nations, our nation is divided about so many things. Give us humility and empathy that, lends, that leads to civility and respect for one another. Lift the hearts and minds of our leaders to heed your call to work for justice for every neighbor no matter their political preference or money in their pockets. Bridge our differences with your reconciling truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of light, pour out your healing power today on those living with pain, illness, isolation, grief, anger, or doubt, especially Austin, Jenny, Arlene, Mike, Joyce, Grace, Bruce, Jean, Jana, Jordan, Lisa, Rose, Sheila, and Peter, Dennis, Elisa, Jim, Marge, Amy, Mitch, Leanne, and Sharon. The thousands suffering from COVID-19 in South Dakota today, the hundreds of thousands around the world who've become ill from this plague and others we name before you now.
join their voices in a new song and assure them that you call each of them by name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing, we thank you for your servant Luke, for his witness in his gospel and book of Acts, for his work as a physician. Bless all those who daily work reflects the work of Jesus, our Lord and healer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless and strengthen all who have committed their lives to the callings of the health care, especially nurses, nursing aides, doctors, midwives, nurse practitioners, physical therapists, dentists, chiropractors, counselors, physician assistants, emergency medical technicians, hospital administrators, researchers, and those who volunteer in hospital and clinics. Sustain them during the pandemic, protect their health, and sustain them in their calling. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living God, as you raise Jesus from the dead to raise up those who have died in you, especially your servant, Tom Kelly, we give thanks to his witness, confident of your rescuing welcome for all. Comfort Tom's wife, Julie, their children and grandchildren, and all who mourn Tom's death. Comfort the hundreds of South Dakotan families who are mourning loved ones who have died from COVID-19. Come close with your mercy and grace, Lord. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. afraid my love is stronger my love is stronger than your fear don't be afraid my love is stronger and I have promised promised to be always near don't be afraid, my love is stronger, my love is stronger than your fear. Don't be afraid, my love is stronger, and I have promised, promised to be always near. There are several announcements I'd like to uh, share with you again. Thank you for gathering in this way for worship this morning. Uh, next Sunday, if you are a uh, Sioux Falls resident, remember next Sunday is what we we receive our monthly food on the fourth gathering, which go uh, of, of non-perishable foods. It goes to the Feeding South Dakota food shelf, and you can bring it next Sunday at our outdoor worship, or we have barrels available just inside our back door throughout the week. Um, so we welcome your gifts, which we pass on to 
to our neighbors. On Wednesday night, October 28th, uh, we're going to host a trunk or treat. We know that many of our younger partners and friends will probably not be out uh, trick or treating as usual this year. So we're inviting families, our middle school and high school youth, uh, to uh, be a part of a trunk or treat. Come with a car uh, to uh, decorate your car, come in a costume if you like. We don't want lots of people around any particular car, but we're gonna, we're gonna do uh, some hosting of opportunities to share some, uh, what you share in Halloween, Halloween treats. And that will be Wednesday night, October 28th. Uh, if you'd like to find out more about that, you can email our office at info, I-N-F-O, at spiritofjoy.net. And also, I promised a couple of weeks ago that we were going to hold another Film and Faith discussion. That has been bumped back a week now. But we will be gathering via Zoom on Tuesday, October 27th, to discuss the movie The Two Popes. It's on Netflix only. Um, it's a, a fascinating character study, but also a look at uh, the two men, uh, Pope Benedict, um, and then the man who became Pope Francis, our current Pope. Their conversation, the story of their faith and their struggles. So if you're interested in joining that conversation, uh, you can sign up on our website or send me an email at jeffisley at spiritofjoy.net. And then uh, one more announcement. Sunday, November 1st is All Saints Day and All Saints Sunday. And this year, Spirit of Joy will hold a walk of remembrance on Sunday evening. We want to fill our path to the gardens with luminaries. And on those luminaries, we would like to remember the names of persons that you are remembering this All Saints Day. If you'd like to include the names of loved ones on one of those luminaries, you can um, sign up and put those names on our sign up, spiritofjoy.net signups, or again, you can email the uh, church office, info, info at spiritofjoy.net, and we will put the names of people that we receive from you on those luminaries. And then come and join us uh, as we have this time. Uh, we'll, we'll give you a prayer card and invite you to walk uh, a walk of remembrance. We'll also um, find some ways to remember the now more than 300 South Dakotans who have died uh, because of COVID-19 and you know, the hundreds of thousands of other Americans who have also lost their lives. It's a time for us to come together, to turn to God, to grieve, and to lean on um, the promise that nothing can separate us from God's love. Once again, I want to say thank you for the ways that so many of you continue to support the ministry of our church. Uh, our ministry does continue. We're meeting with high school and middle school youth via Zoom. We're sending out packets of information for our kids and faith formation. Last week, we welcomed four of our uh, first graders to the Lord's Table in outdoor worship. Uh, you have contributed more than 400 pairs of underwear as part of our Laundry with Love uh, collection. So thank you for all the ways that you help us continue our ministry. Thank you for your financial gifts. You may contribute through the mail. You can contribute by going to our website, www.spiritofjoy.net, or also use our uh, Spirit of Joy app uh, for giving. We'll worship now with uh, our gifts. Once again, we prepare now to come to the Lord's table, remembering Jesus' promise that he is present where two or three are gathered, however we are gathered, and also is present in bread and wine, which we will share uh, again today. And as I mentioned earlier, if you have not, uh, if you choose, you don't have to certainly, but if you choose to eat and drink at this time, you may pause the recording and uh, gather the wine or juice and the bread or crackers that you want to use uh, as we share the Lord's Supper together. Let us pray. Blessed 
are you, O God, maker of all things. You have set before us these gifts of your good creation. Prepare us for your heavenly banquet. Nourish us with this rich food and drink. And send us forth to set tables in the midst of a suffering world. Through the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Yours are the hands that show you care, 
you lift the hearts of those who suffer. Your hands celebrate the joy of healing. Your hands bless all they touch with the spirit of compassion. Thank you for sharing your abundance and gifts, for touching lives and lifting spirits. Blessings and thanks for the many works of your hands. May your hands bring healing to all those you touch. Amen. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you now and keep you in everlasting love. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.